Don and Zach, uh, we got a question on Connect. So, uh, why do people hate God? You know, that's uh, to me that is such an easy question and yet a very complex question at the same time. Um, uh, people hate God for one reason is because God's in control, and people want to be in control. And yeah, uh, that's a great point. You know, and Second Timothy says it says it really good. It says. It says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days, which the last days are any time after Jesus. And it says, um, people will be lovers of themselves. It says, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You know, and right there, it, it says it plainly that, you know, people want to uh, do what they want to do. Absolutely. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, they want to be yeah. the ones that are calling the shots. And, you know, Jesus said, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one enters the world but through me. Absolutely. You know, and right there, that's being very inclusive of, um, you know, getting to God in the world. <clears throat> or exclusive. Or exclusive. You're that's not, what yeah, I meant. Yeah. That's what I meant. Exclusive. And the world wants an inclusive way, you know, <laughs> uh, saying that, oh, I can get to God any way I want. Or I'm really a good person, so God's going to accept me. Yeah. Um, that's 100% to the core of the problem is we ourselves, we want the role of God. And right. our own lives. Right. Um, I think it was R.C. Sproul, of course, we quote him a lot, who said that the Bible is the most offensive book ever written because it makes you the villain. Right? right. It's you are the core problem of why life is going to have these tribulations. So as long as you can get out of your own way, seek the Almighty's guidance, leadership, and instruction, then that's the beginning of wisdom. And the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of uh, the fear of God is understanding, you know, the insight and the wisdom that comes from him and him alone. You know, you stop and think one of the biggest arguments in the world today of, of you know, God versus no God is, you know, the argument of evolution. Mm -hmm. You know, the and, intellectual side. Right, right, right. You know, and so the, the, the people that fight for evolution are the people that don't want there to be a God. Yes. You know, that's the reason they hold so tight on that argument. It's funny how that just lines up perfectly. Right. right? Yeah. You know, be, because when, when you have evolution and there's no God, then there's no accountability. Mm -hmm. There's no accountability, then I can live the life however I want to live it. Exactly. You know, and I can, I can be my own little God in my life. Yeah, never and, in our history have I seen more people in the public guy refer to themselves as the God. Right. I mean, we're talking, you know, hip-hop artists, I mean people online on games, it, it doesn't make a difference. Everyone is their own God. And it's, it's really telling because when you elevate self on that pedestal, I mean, that's the number one objective of Satan is to get your eyes off of the Lord and your eyes on yourself because you will always fail. Absolutely. And speaking of failing, you know, that's, you know, the gospel is offensive. And, you know, one of the, the, the first parts of the gospel explaining the gospel is saying that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god yeah. you know that we're all horrible we're all bad we're mm -hmm. all dead in our transgressions and people don't want to hear that nope. people think they're a good person people think that they're out there swimming in the water and god throws them in the life jacket but dead men don't swim right dead men are done they can't the do bottom, anything you are pulled out of that right by him. You have no control of that. He does. Right. And, you know, so when it, when it comes down to why do people hate God, it's, 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 it's a super simple question. It's simple it's, and loaded at the same time. Right. Yeah. Be because people just want to be in control of their life, their way, mm -hmm. not God's way. So, guys, if, if people are tired of hating God, what, what is that next step for them? <laughs> well, um, we'll take it directly to Scripture. And in uh, John chapter 3, we'll go to uh, verse 19, it says, And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. And then in verse 20, For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light. Let his works should 
lest his works should be exposed. So there is a, there's a Christian band, um, and, her, and there's a female-led vocalist. Her name is Lacey Sturm, and she has a side project, and her band is called Flyleaf. And on this, um, on this exact topic from these two verses, she says, I'm so infatuated by the darkness, but I'm so surrounded by the light. And that, to me, stuck out even when I was away from the Lord, because you will inevitably fall away. You will. Um, it's not if, it's when. Mm-hmm. And you're going to try to do things with one hand over here in the cookie jar with God, and then, meanwhile, the other half is pulling towards the weight of the world. It's because there's something to be said about the unknown and our inquisitive, um, curious selves. You know, curiosity killed the cat. kills a lot of people, too. And uh, when we fall away into that, that darkness, and darkness doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be necromancy, divinations, and everything else. It's everything that is not in the light. You know, and, and darkness can, um, can be real deceiving. Because if this, if, you know, when when you pick up a shiny ball and look at it and think, "Gee, this is going to be fun," and you know deep in your heart that it's bad. Yes, there's you that know, constant gnawing voice. You know, and eventually, sooner or later, that newness wears off, mm-hmm. and then it starts to show its real light, mm-hmm. and people see that, and they begin. There's something inside them that will always call them away from that and call them right. to something. Yeah. And that's something that's God's calling and mm-hmm. God and the Holy Spirit's touching them. And at that point, you know, people um, start seeking and they start looking. That's why people, they end up in church or they end up talking to somebody. And before that, if you're there today and you don't know where to go, right. start with prayer. Right. Start with just humbling yourself, surrendering yourself to him. And when you pray, don't. Don't have the mindset that he's hanging out on the moon, you know, in a satellite in orbit out there in space. When you close your eyes, pretend like he's right there next to you right. and speak to him. You know, we all know, we all know the, the John three sixteen passage that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, you know, right. for me, yeah. for you. Yeah, individually, you know, each one Individually of us. for each one of us. Yeah. And, and that's for everybody, no matter where you're at. You know, there's no sin that is that is too great and no sin too little for for him to cover. You know, and it says the wages of sin is death. But the second half of that scripture is, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ our Lord. Amen.